What's going on, Sunbelt fans? My name is Dominic Crescetto. Welcome into the Round Ball Roundup. That's what we're going to call this to differentiate it from the wrap-up that we have for football. We'll call this one the Round Ball Roundup since it's basketball. Anyways, this will be covering all of week one and also uh, what was Monday night last night, uh, if you're listening to this on a Tuesday. So uh, everything up to 1114 uh, which includes Troy's big win over Florida State. We'll get to that uh, in just a moment. Uh, but we will cover just kind of the conference as a whole. We're not going to go into real specific things on each and every team. Uh, we want to keep these things short and sweet so you can keep up with the entirety of the action instead of just a couple of games here and there. So overall, the conference record right now is 28-9, and nine, which looks fantastic right there hasn't been a single conference game so every single game has gone into that stat line there however we do need to note that 18 of those wins have been against division two or naia teams so don't get too pumped up and, and thinking that this conference is head and shoulders above a whole bunch of other teams right now or uh, other conferences right now with that uh statistic uh it's not quite as Good looking when you break it down game by game. The record against Power 5 teams currently sits at 2-4 and four overall, which isn't great. But some of those Power 5 teams that have beaten Sunbelt teams uh, are pretty good teams year in, year out, or are strong right now. So not a terrible overall record, especially early in the year when some teams are sorting through some things. Uh, We can mention that uh, six teams are currently undefeated right now. That would be James Madison, Louisiana, Southern Miss, Troy, App State, and Coastal Carolina. There is only one team in the entire conference with a losing record right now, and that team is Georgia Southern. Although, I would say uh, to temper that when you think and look at who they've played, uh, they just finally had their kind of like tune-up easy game uh, two games in because they had a a two-game stretch over in California against two teams that are pretty good and so they had a little bit tougher start than a lot of the other teams in the conference so there is a caveat with that record at this point in time Uh, but still not a great start for Georgia Southern obviously they want to do better than that and maybe they'll turn things around here five teams have gone over the century mark and put up over a hundred points James Madison and Monroe have actually done it twice. Now, most of those are some of those lower teams. So great that they've done it. It's never easy to do that, even against easier teams. Uh, So a great start there for both of those teams, especially to have already done it twice. Uh, So we'll go through some notable games here real quick. Uh, Marshall drops a one-point game against Queens. Uh, I did have to do some background research on this. I assumed Queens was a a lower division team. They are not. They are a Division I team, so no shame in in that aspect. Uh, They are in the A-10. They are a newer Division I team, and they were picked towards the bottom of the A-10 conference. So not a great loss, but maybe one that kind of sparks Marshall to turn some things around uh, and can help shape their season, uh, you know, because it's an early on loss they can recover from pretty well. Uh, One of those Power 5 conference games, Texas State went to Washington State, a decent travel for them, and dropped that one 83-61. And then the same night, ULM traveled not nearly as far over to Texas A&M and got drubbed pretty good, 87-54. So again, there's the two P5 games to start with, not a good look, but... We will see how that changes as we get down here. Uh, As mentioned, Georgia Southern drops one to San Jose State and also to Santa Clara, uh, doing a little bit better as a performance in that Santa Clara game. But again, two games skid to start the year for them. Then on the opposite side of that, we have Louisiana taking it to a a Harvard team that's usually pretty solid every year. Uh, They beat them 75-61 in a preseason tournament in Asheville, North Carolina. And then we get on the board with our first big victory of the season. Southern Miss takes down Vanderbilt 60-48. to So not only did they beat the Power 5 team that a lot of team, a lot of people probably wouldn't have them beating, but they did it soundly uh, and without question. So great win there for Southern Miss. Great win as far as a team that's coming into the conference that a lot of people don't know about. 
um, previously, obviously, for those of you that were also in the Conference USA with Southern Miss, you already know a little bit more about their basketball program. But those of us that have been Sunbelt fans for the last few years don't know nearly as much. So great to see them get on the board early and have a big win against a team like Vanderbilt from the SEC. Uh, Old Dominion drops one to Drexel. And Drexel's not a Power 5 team, but they are a consistent you know, basketball school. They don't have football, so... Uh, that's a pretty big program routinely to at least name recognition wise. They dropped that one 71-59 uh, and not really too far away uh, because Drexel's right there in the, in the Philadelphia area. So not too much of a travel there for ODU. Uh, Arkansas State travels to LSU and goes down 61-52. Not a terrible matchup. Uh, pretty close score. LSU, not the greatest basketball team, but they've had some decent teams in the past. So not too bad for Arkansas State to start off with a a pretty competitive game, I'd say, against LSU. And then uh, one that was really exciting to watch at the end, Georgia Tech traveling over to Georgia State. Pretty packed house there. Georgia State's opening up their new basketball facility. They dropped that one 59-57 and had every chance to win it there at the end. Uh, Came down to a couple fouls, some free throws, and then inbound ball. They had Georgia State had the last chance to put up the shot, and unfortunately, a little bit of an errant pass kind of goes off the legs and knee uh, and goes out of bounds, and they didn't even get the shot off, but they might have had an open three look to win it at the buzzer. So a great uh, finish to that one, even though it's not how we wanted it to go. Uh, Georgia State still looked pretty strong overall, and I think they will go on to have a pretty successful season if they can continue playing at that level. Louisiana finishes up that North Carolina tournament with a 81 to 77 victory over ETSU. That's East Tennessee State University. Uh, For those of you that don't know, East Tennessee State is a pretty routinely pretty good program. So to uh, take that one and get that victory down there in Asheville, finish up that tournament strong, great look for the conference, even better look for Louisiana. Uh, And then we will get to the big, big victory from last night, which had Troy beating Florida State 79-72. That covers all the games of note up until now. And obviously, you know, looking good against those Power 5 opponents here more recently than the very beginning of the season. Coming up this week, we've got some big games to list off. We'll start with App State taking on Louisville. And then we have Alabama travels to South Alabama. So a big game for South Alabama to host there. Hopefully they can come away with two victories. uh, Sorry, Louisiana. Louisville is down pretty good this year. They've already lost to Division II Lenore Ryan out of Hickory, North Carolina. And they lost to Bellemere, which is right there in Louisville, a small private college who was previously 0-12 against Louisville. So interesting start for Louisville. They're still favored in this matchup by 7, which is, you know, there for the taking in basketball. I think a seven-point spread isn't too much. So we'll see what happens in those two Power 5 matchups. We've got ODU also facing Virginia Tech. Texas State playing at UTSA. Again, it's not a Power 5 matchup. Maybe one to note. And uh, ULM going up against TCU. And a little bit later in the week, we've got South Alabama with another big game going up against Oklahoma. And then James Madison to round out the week with the biggest matchup of them all going to number one or number two, depending on which poll you look at, North Carolina. So uh, rounding out the week with a really big matchup for them with how many points they've put on the board should make for an interesting game. Looking at the statistical leaders in the country right now, this divi- this includes all Division One teams. We've got a number of Sunbelt teams on these leaderboards. Offensive leaders, we've got App State and James Madison in the top three of points scored per game. App State sitting at second place with 110.5 average. James Madison in third at 108.7. So great starts offensively for those two teams. Defensive leaders, we actually have one in the top five as well. At sitting at number three right now is Coastal Carolina, only allowing their opponents to average 45 points per game. Field goal percentage, we've got two in the top five. Coastal Carolina averaging about 60 field goal percentage. James Madison at 58.4, real close behind them. They actually come in at number four. 
In rebounds, we've got one team in the top five. That's also Coastal Carolina at 49.5. Point differential, two teams. Yet again, two teams. Coastal Carolina keeps showing up in these. Hopefully that bodes well for their season. They are a 58.5 point differential in the positive matter. And right behind them is James Madison at 55.9. Uh, and then in blocks, we actually have one and happens to be number one in the country right now, which is Appalachian State with nine and a half. So great starts for the conference as a whole. Again, temper a little bit of this. Uh, it's not end all be all. It's early, but it's kind of cool stuff to hang your hat on at the moment. As far as players personally, Tavon Kinsley from Marshall is having a really good start to the season, as is Linton Brown for Coastal Carolina. Uh, defensively, SM Mustafa from Coastal Carolina. Again, you're seeing two players from Coastal Carolina on the offensive and defensive side. It's got to bode well for them. That's why they're statistical leaders on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball early on in the season. Uh, and Justin Absen from App State is number one in blocks as far as within the conference themselves. These are the conference leaders, not national leaders at this point. But again, these are the reason why some of these teams are in top five uh, categories at this point. So we'll see if these guys can keep it up. Great starts for them and the conference as a whole. So hopefully you enjoyed week one of the round ball roundup. And uh, we can continue to provide some overall coverage of the conference as we get closer to conference play and some other exciting matchups along the way, some preseason tournaments and uh, maybe some live action stuff uh, on video to come. We'll see about that, but that would be a fun thing to get into and see what some people's thoughts are before playing some of these games. So hopefully you enjoy the coverage more to come throughout the rest of the season. Thanks for listening.